Hi guys, welcome to another video and welcome to the Blagdenham Estate in Northumberland. Now what I'm doing today is I've come here hoping to photograph the change of the season really. Uh, I'm using a new macro lens which is the Sigma 70mm Art 2.8 and really I'm looking for small details, I'm not looking for the big scene at all. I'm travelling quite light, I've just bought the Sony a7 IV um, the 24 to 105 which I'm going to use for a bit of video and also the, as I say, the macro lens. Let's get to it. Okay, so I've got my first composition and what we've got is we've got basically a group of apples which have fallen onto some autumn leaves, which is looking really nice. It's a nice detail shot. So. I'm going to just swing you around so you can see in front. You can see my camera is pointing directly down and there's quite a lot of apples around here. So what I've done, I've just basically isolated these two down here. If I put the viewfinder on. And now I've got the viewfinder on so you can see my composition. And basically I've just put the two small apples down there and the leaf is just falling there. All natural, haven't moved anything at all. All I was finding is that I was getting a lot of movement from the wind. So. I've improvised with my bag just there to block the wind and now all I need to do is take the shot and let's have a look at it. So look at this little beauty. So what I've done is I've composed a square crop of the toadstool and ideally I'd like to shoot at 2.8 because what I'd like to try and achieve is to blur the background as much as possible because it's a little bit messy. The uh, problem is if I shoot at 2.8 the whole toadstool isn't in focus. So I'm going to try focus bracketing. Now I'm not a macro expert by any means so I'm not sure if it's going to work. But what I've done is I've taken a shot focusing on the stem then I'm going to focus one at the front of the toadstool, then focus one at, towards the rear of the toadstool. Then I'm going to try and merge those together and hopefully achieve front to back sharpness of the toadstool, but also still keep the nice blurred background. But just to play safe, I'm also going to shoot one at f16, where everything of the toadstool is totally in focus. And I'll put them up, put both shots up, and you can decide which one looks best. Okay, so let's talk about this lens. This is the Sigma 70mm f2.8 macro lens. It's part of the art series, so it's very well made, super robust, lots of metal going on there. And it does offer life-size reproduction, so it's one-to-one. -one. Now, 70mm is a bit of a funny focal length for a macro lens, and it's something that really did put me off. I've used 50mm macro lenses in the past and I've used 105mm macro lenses. Now I always find 105mm to be the real sort of sweet spot. So I was very concerned that the 70mm would mean I'd have to just get a little bit too close to things if I wanted to achieve life-size reproduction and the reality is that is the case. But it's, it's workable and the upside is because it's 70mm it's a bit smaller and it's quite light and it means I may actually leave it in the bag and actually carry it all the time. Now also being 70mm it means it's actually quite good for other things. I found the 105 can be a bit restrictive for a general walk around lens but this 70mm you could actually use it just as a walk around lens so it is actually quite nice. Uh, I used it recently at a wedding and to be honest I found 70mm really useful so that's an another win. Now one thing to keep in mind is that's the size of the lens cap and that's the actual lens. Now when you focus the front protrudes as you get to one to one. And effectively, if you're at one-to-one, -one, what will happen is the front will protrude enough to be virtually at the top of the lens hood. So if you're using the lens hood, this is fine because you're not likely to knock the front element. But if you haven't got the lens hood on, it's very easy to start focusing and to actually bash the front of the lens off your subject. So I would recommend that you always use a lens hood and then really that becomes a bit of a non-issue. But optically, it's beautiful, great lens, it hasn't got image stabilisation, 
not an issue with the Sony a7 IV because obviously it's got IBIS. But if you were to use it in a camera body that didn't have IBIS, then I think really, yeah, that would be a bit of an issue. But as I say, the results from it are beautiful. And the, perhaps the, the only downside with it is the autofocus is a bit noisy and not the fastest. But, you know, again, I can cope with not being the fastest. It's a macro lens. This is quite common for a macro lens. It has quite a distance to actually focus from. And yes, you can set the limiters and that does help. But you have to remember you've set the limiters. But if you're using it for video, you know, it could be a concern because you can definitely hear it. But, you know, if you're doing sort of th some, something like I'm doing now and using a lav mic, it's not going to be a problem. But as a fairly budget macro lens, I paid £449 for it brand new from Amazon. The results are outstanding and I wouldn't hesitate in recommending it. OK, so this is perhaps not the greatest shot in the world and it's definitely not the best camera angle of me. Um, but really I wanted to demonstrate to you just how close you need to be to your subject to achieve life-size reproduction. Now this isn't quite life-size reproduction, but it's very close. And um, yeah, you don't have much space to you. Now let's face it, if you're photographing bugs and things like that, they're going to get spooked. They're going to get seriously spooked. So really, keep this in mind, if you want to photograph insects, this is not the lens for you. Okay, so I've found another nice little scene. I'm not sure if you can see it. Basically, I've got what appears to be like an avalanche of leaves caught in this tree trunk here. Hopefully you can see that. And uh, you, yeah, it's quite simple. I'm quite close. I think this is where this lens comes into its own really because I can be fairly close, not obscenely close, but fairly close. And it's super sharp as it's a macro lens. I've gone for a square crop again and I'm shooting at f20 just simply because I want to try and maximise the depth of field as much as possible. Effectively what happens is the closer you get to a subject normally that depth of field sort of reduces down a bit so you have to increase your aperture up a bit to try and sort of compensate. So if I was further away I could get away with f14 because I'm closer f20 should do it. Hopefully diffraction won't be too much of an issue. And apart from that, it's a really simple shot. I've literally just gone for the play of the colours against the subdued tones of the tree trunk. And yeah, that's it. I'll put the shot up now. I'm going to be honest, I found an old snail shell and uh, sort of sitting in the, under, in the undergrowth. And so I decided to sort of try placing it on a leaf and just to see how it looked. So, you know, it, it, is, it is a play shot. It's, it's not, not, wasn't naturally found like that. I've tried it on a different, couple of different backdrops. And yeah, it's, if nothing else, it's a nice little test of the macro lens just to see how nice and sharp it is when you get that little bit closer. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put it up now. And with that, I'm going to finish the video. Uh, it's been an enjoyable few hours out in the, in the woodland. I think mean, autumn's not quite here yet. It's on the turn. Uh, I, I've, I've got definitely at least one or two shots I'm happy with. So, you know, I, I'm pleased and um, I've got to try this lens out, which I think it's a great lens, you know, for what it does, it's brilliant. Yes, it's not an insect macro lens, but, you know, if you want to do sort of like close-up details it's beautiful for that it's super sharp and i'm definitely keeping it anyway guys i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please do consider giving it a thumbs up uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i'll see you again very soon for another one thanks for watching